enjoying the sun? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit on how empathy can be a cure for social anxiety or even anxiety in general. So I see it as two different kinds of empathy that we can do, or really four. Uh, the two primary kinds being empathy for self and empathy for others. And of each of those, there's two subcategories, which is, um, well, the second one, there's subcategories. If you do it internally, empathy for others internally versus externally. And that would look like, um, wow, so that person said this thing, I'm feeling, how am I feeling? Excited, annoyed, um, and where's that emotion coming from? Is it a need for respect or a need to be heard? A need for consideration, etc. Back to empathy uh, for self. Okay, that's usually more silent. I mean, you could talk out loud if that's your way or whatever, of course. But what that looks like is, oh, you know, I, I'm feeling annoyed, etc. What? So there's my emotion, annoyed. What's underneath that? What did I want more of? Maybe it was consideration. Maybe it was respect. Maybe it was understanding. If we begin with empathy for self, then what that leads to is acceptance. Can anybody here see and wants to share how they see or in what way they see how empathy for self can lead to more acceptance? I'm judgmental to yourself and that helps be non-judgmental to other people. And then you, if you can connect with other people in an empathetic way versus a judge, judging critical way. Yeah. This is how can self-empathy lead to empathy for others, and I think you nailed it. I mean, uh, to me, it's—I don't know if anybody has more has anything more to say about that. Like, even if it's sharing a personal experience succinctly that has clued you into this or has helped you in life. Hustle, hustle. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think like to build on to all the other points that these wonderful ladies said, um, I think that having empathy for yourself is also accepting the condition and that things are out of your control. And sometimes doing that also allows you to view other people as, hey, they're also probably going through something and it's probably also out of control. Um, one example is like my workplace, you know, there's a lot of projects that are disorganized and I, I kind of like, maybe I'm the only one that's like reacting and going crazy and I'm like, no, it's probably everybody that I work with. Like, um, so that's just one quick anecdote. Oh, thank you. That so inspires me too, because I was feeling a little bit like, eh, I don't know what I could contribute to this stuff. Um, but so to somewhat elaborate and you know, restate it, it's like when you when you feel acceptance for every part of you or most parts of you or whatever, a huge part of you. Then when you encounter others, and that acceptance in this system, I'll get specific for a second, is very much about, okay, what needs are underlying my feelings? And the needs in this system are pretty, mm, pretty much, they're, they're all, there's no negative or positive, they're just human needs. They're needs that everybody has. Okay, so that, that's, that's where you inspired me, is because you're, you're speaking of looking around and, and seeing, okay, this person acting this way, acting out whatever you want to call it, well, there is a human need underneath that. There's a reason. And once you fully, I call it integration, once you fully integrate this, in, in other words, sort of like in the beginning of playing piano, where you're, you're stumbling along through sort of a formula, and then there comes a point when it's integrated, meaning you don't, you don't need to do that anymore. You don't need to think it's in muscle memory and you could be creative. And that's where this system goes. And it leads to a lot of things, okay? One, one, one part being, being in the moment, okay? Empathy, I have found, at least this system of it, leads a person to being in the moment more often. And, and because of that acceptance of what is, and you can't, in the anxiety part, you can't fear if you're not in the moment, if you're in the moment, because fear comes from a future thought, right? And so being in the moment, you're calm, you are confident um, with the acceptance, right? And so then what do you project with your body language? This sort of confidence and ease with life and 
and this self-acceptance and it's going to not only make it so much easier to accept others but for others to accept you and thus you're not even being treated in any ways that could create anxiety and maybe you are sometimes but it rolls off of you because of that ease and inner strength you you don't care and you care about what's important right which is maybe what's underneath what people are doing not what they're doing and not how you choose to take it because this also leads to more choices like more feelings and thoughts of oh wow you know I've got a million choices I don't have to react I don't have to play that game that that game we all play to some degree in this 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 world this bigger game right well I think we can win <laughs> at the bigger game by letting go of all those self expectations of how to get along and to please others and uh, I think I'm going to leave it there. Any questions? This is the Q&A part. Okay. You've got a microphone. If somebody wants to ask questions. Had, and I think, I don't think you've addressed this before, but have you um, seen, I guess, like in kind of your findings and how you've been you know, going through this with empathy, that if you empathize with yourself, which allows you to empathize with others, it shows up in a tangible way to the other person so that it actually drives change in that other person. And maybe I'm not just speaking from my experience, but I feel like we all have a group of friends, a group of family members where we're like, come on guys, get out of whatever era you're in. Come on, change with whatever. You know, I, I, need, I need some disruption here. And that's definitely something I struggle with. Um, so wondering from an empathy standpoint, like if, you, if you've seen that or if there's like tools and, and techniques that you use to, to drive that more in a positive direction. Oh, quite a bit. Thanks for that question. That's that's awesome. Um, I love that. So there are both subtle and unsubtle ways to handle it, and I handle it both just depending on context. Okay, the subtle is continue to empathize. So, but you can sort of accentuate certain parts, or maybe you don't even have to. For example, wow, I hear you, you know, saying a whole lot and complaining or whatever. You know, complaining is a bit of a judgment, but saying a whole lot about how. You know, you're just annoyed at yourself and frustrated because you can't quit um, smoking. You know, and it's like, wow, I hear you. Like, it's it sounds like it's it's really hard for you to quit smoking, and you want to bring it up a lot because you know you I, I appreciate the trust. You know, or a lot is also a judgment. So, you know, we we depending on their emotional uh, strength or whatever, it's it you know your wording is going to change. Now, then. Hopefully, hopefully it sinks in. I mean, okay, and then the unsubtle, I guess if it doesn't sink in over a certain part of time, might be like, wow, I'm really concerned for you because this same thing keeps happening. You keep bringing it up, and I'm annoyed. Like, I don't want to hear it anymore. Like, I feel like I've empathized with you, and I feel really frustrated. I want for your health, and I also feel worried about you. Because this some, seems like a real struggle for you, you know, whatever. Mix in however much empathy versus, like, well, it's self-empathy out loud. There's the out loud for self-empathy. Where you're like, I feel really annoyed by this, and I, I want to respect you more, and I want to enjoy being around you. So, you know, maybe you could actually do something about this thing instead of talking about it. 